Attention is really important for learning. That's lesson one. Let me share four stories about how. You're sitting in a lecture and a student in front of you has a laptop open. Just seeing that student with their laptop open, say they're playing a video game, is enough to distract you from paying attention to the lecture. You end up learning less than your friend who maybe is sitting somewhere else. When you are learning to shoot a basketball, you can pay attention to a couple of different things. You can pay attention to the way your body is positioned or the way your hand or your wrist is flicking the ball into the basket. That's called internal focus because you're focused on what your body is doing. Or you can pay attention to the arc of the basketball as it's going into the hoop. That is what is called external focus because you're paying attention to something that's outside of your body. All the research suggests that if you pay attention to something outside of your body, you're going to be learning more effectively. Now, this is true for motor skills of all kinds. And the reason seems to be that when you focus internally on what your body is doing, it interrupts these implicit learning systems that are going on all the time with your body. Generally speaking, your body is very good at automatically doing what it needs to do. So that's another situation where what you pay attention to has consequences for what you're learning. Now imagine you're sitting in another lecture and a teacher tells a story. And it's funny and it's true and it's inspiring. What can happen is that you pay more attention to the story that is being told than the actual content of what the teacher is trying to tell you. This is known as the effect of seductive details. Basically, you paid attention to the wrong thing, so you didn't learn what you were supposed to. Now, suppose you're learning art history and you're looking at these three paintings and you're thinking about how these paintings are similar to one another. But your friend is looking at these same paintings and she's thinking about how these paintings are different from one another. Now, you both may have spent the same amount of time looking at the same paintings, but because of the difference in what you paid attention to and how you thought about the paintings, you're going to walk away learning something different from the experience. Now, you can kind of think of the relationship between attention and learning in two parts. The first question is, how much attention are you paying to what you are doing? If you're looking at your phone during a lecture, well, you're splitting your attention, and so you're not going to learn as effectively. If you are doing your homework while you're eating, you're splitting your attention. You're not going to be learning as much as you might from that homework otherwise. And the second question is, what parts are you paying attention to? What you get out of each learning experience depends on what you pay attention to and what you focus on. Are you thinking about how these three cases are similar? Or are you thinking about how scary this clown is? Now for lesson two. Attention is one of those interesting parts of the mind that is influenced or controlled by many different sources. You can pay attention to any of these four quadrants right now. Or you might just not be listening at all to what I am saying. But the point is, is that you have some control over how you direct your attention. I can remember curling up with a good book as a kid and just shutting out everything else, all the noise, anyone who was trying to talk to me, just so focused on that book and the experience of reading. And there are a lot of things like that. But your attention is also influenced by outside sources. <coughs> Sirens are specifically designed to grab your attention, whatever it is you might be doing. It's hard to ignore a siren. Or you might have chronic pain, which constantly calls out to you even when you try to ignore it and focus on something else. Finally, here is lesson three. As a consequence of lessons one and two, teachers and students share responsibility for shaping attention. Teachers can shape attention by reducing what's called extraneous cognitive load. That's just a fancy word for things that teachers are asking you to pay attention to that are completely irrelevant to the skill they are trying to teach. One of the common examples you see in college is professors using graphs with extra information on it that is irrelevant to what they are trying to teach. A better way is to decide what purpose the graph is there for and to introduce complexity slowly over time. Another thing to think about is that every unfamiliar vocabulary word has a cost. The student has to spend the rest of 
their lesson, at least paying some attention to the meaning of this unfamiliar vocabulary word, which they don't know deeply yet. And so the question is always, is the value of introducing this no, new vocabulary word at this point in time worth draining a student's attention away if it's something that you're gonna be using over and over again? Even just telling students what you want them to learn at the beginning of a lesson can help structure student attention so that they're paying attention to the right thing. Generally speaking, it's not a good idea to hide the ball from them and kind of surprise this was what you were supposed to learn from this lesson when they could have been focused on trying to learn that thing throughout the entire lesson. But students also share a responsibility. One of the key things that students can do is to reduce distractions as much as possible. The more that you can focus on what you are learning for that fixed time period, the more effective that that learning session is going to be for you. The other thing is to pay attention to the deep structure. Pay attention to the things that are left unsaid rather than the superficial features of what you are learning. In math, for instance, the important thing isn't to just know what the algorithm is for solving a certain kind of problem. The important thing is to understand why that algorithm works and when it stops working and how you can adapt that algorithm to other kinds of problems. You cannot learn what you don't pay attention to, except for all of the implicit learning processes that are going on in your mind all the time. So here is a video that gets into that subject a little bit. Take care, everyone. See you next time.